I'm going to talk about the terminology of identified identities. My talk will be divided into three sections. I will first uh, introduce the notations that I use in my work. Then I will define the control complex and its relation to singularity. Then I will, uh, I will uh, talk about the hub structures and its relation to plane curve complex. So in my work, I consider curves in the projective plane. So as we have seen in the previous talk, we will consider three variables, x, y, z, and homogeneous polynomials in x, y, z. So take S to be the graded the ring of polynomial functions in x, y, z with complex coefficients. Uh, the graded pieces as R, the selective spaces of the homogeneous polynomials of the R. We consider a polynomial of degree n. The partial derivatives of f are homogeneous polynomial and they define mm -hmm. an idea that we call the Jacobian idea. This ideal is also homogeneous and we consider the graded algebra S modified by Jf. It's called the minor algebra. And since Jf is homogeneous, Mf is also graded and the grading comes from the grading on S. Now, consider a curve having isolated singularities. So, we have intersections of curves and we have isolated singularities here. We look locally at each singularity and we define the local equation at each one, which is g of u v. And we define the minimum number of f at p to be the dimension of OP <coughs> modeled by JG. JG is the Jacobian ideal of G, and OP is the local ring of uh, analytic map G. Then we define also the Jurina number of F, which is the dimension of OP modeled by the ideal generated by G and the Jacobian ideal of G. So the minimum <coughs> number and the Jurina number are, uh, are uh, invariant of curves. Now, if we want to find the Jurina number and the Miller number of all the curves, we look locally at each singularity, we find the Jurina number or the Miller number at each singularity, and then we take the sum of all of them. So, for example, if we take a note, and I will use okay. So, we look locally at the node, and we see this is the node. If we look locally, we see that we have two lines, and the local equation of a norm will be g of uv equals to u squared plus z squared. So if we want to compute the minimum number at this node, at this point, we find the Jacobian of g, which is generated by uv. So the derivative with respect to u is 2u, the derivative with respect to v is 2v, and the Jacobian is generated by uv. Then, this will be generated by 1, and its dimension as a C-vector space is equal to 1, and this is the minimum number. Then, if you want to find the Jurina number, you also find the same thing, and it's equal to 1. So the Jurina number and the Miller number of a node is equal to 1. Now if we take a triple point, so around this we have three branches, and the local equation will be given by u v squared plus u, u squared v plus the same, equals to 0. So now if we find the Jacobian, will be generated by uv and u squared plus 3v squared. So the Jurina, the minimum number can be computed and we find that this is generated by 1, u, v, and u squared. And in this case, u is equal to 4. We can also compute the Jurina number and we get We can 
also consider another example. For example, the pass, which is u squared minus v cubed equals to zero, we can find that the linear number is equal to two, which is also equal to the Cherina number. And I just want to explain a little bit the, uh, the topological meaning of the linear number, because it also has a topological meaning. So if we take the curve, the function that takes the cost to the origin, and if we consider a point next to the origin and we consider f inverse of t, so u square minus v cube equals to t, we get smooth curves around the cusp. And these are called the linear fibers. And if we take A neighborhood around the origin. Now, B, so this will be called F inverse FT. B epsilon FT will have the same homotopy type as a of a bouquet of new spheres. So, of a bouquet. So it's not really related to my work, but I think it's nice to give some topological uh, meaning of the number number. Now I will introduce other invariants. Other invariants. So consider the RCP, which is the number of irreducible branches around the singularity. So if we go back to the node, we find that we have two irreducible branches for the triple point. We have three irreducible branches for the cusp. We have, we have only one. And we, we are interested in the delta invariant of C, which is another invariant of curves. And it's given by this formula, half of mu plus r minus 1. And this formula is called the linear jump formula. And actually, the delta invariant uh, counts how many times we have a double point uh, uh, at the singularity. For example, here, we have only one double point. But here, we have three lines. So we have this single, this point can run <coughs> from these two, L1, L2, L3, or from L2 and L3, or from L1 and L3. So we can find the data invariant using counting how many times we have double point, and we get three. Or we can simply use the formula and we get half times 4 plus 3 minus 1. Another invariant of the curves would be the genus of the curve, which is given by n minus 1 times n minus 2 divided by 2, minus the sum of all the data invariants uh, at the singularity. So I repeat n is the degree of the function f. Now, in my work, I was interested in finding the dimensions of the pieces of the Minder algebra. So, I will compute the Poincaré series of the Minder algebra. I define first the Poincaré series, which is for any greater model n, which is the sum of the dimensions of an s times t to the power s. I am also interested in finding the relations between the partial derivatives of f. So if we consider f a homogeneous polynomial, we find the partial derivatives, and we look at the relations between fx, fy, and z. And ar of f is a graded as model. It's called ar because it's all the relations between the partial derivatives. And among these, uh, among these uh, relations, we have the relations found by the trivial relations, which are of the form fi, fj plus minus fj times fi. So fi and j are the partial derivatives of x, fy, and z. So if we take the quotient model, er, 
which are the, uh, the model of the essential relations or the non-trivial physics. So we take all the relations modeled by the trivial relations, or the two relations. And we are interested in finding the dimensions of the R. Now I can talk about the goal of my talk explicitly. So first I will talk about the relation between the linear algebra and the singularities of the curve. And then I will talk about the relation between the Hodge theory of the complement of the curve, the projective complement, and the graded models A, R, and E. Okay. So, I will define first the complete complex. We consider the P forms. The P forms are the forms of this type. It's the sum of CI dxi1, which dxip. So the xi are exactly xyz. We can define the Kazoo complex for the, for it. instead of 2, we have n, so for n plus 1 variable, but I will only restrict it for say, two, uh, 3 variables. And the ci are homogeneous polynomials. We consider homogeneous polynomials as 0, s1, s2, and this is the Kazoo complex. It's this complex that takes from the zero form to the one form, etc., where the differentials are x0, dx plus s1, d1 plus s2, d0. So what I want to do is to consider the Kazoo complex of the partial derivatives of x. So instead of x0, x1, f2, I will take fx, fy, fz. And you will see why this Kazoo complex is very interesting. So this example. If we take fx, fy, fz to be the partial derivatives, we will denote the Kazoo complex by k star of f, and the omega will be df, the differential of x. <coughs> now, if we look at this map, this map, we can compute the image, and we find the image is the Jacobian idea. So, and the kernel of this will be s. So we can we can we see that H3 of k star is exactly the linear algebra up to a twist of k. And we also look at this map at the second cohomology group. So if we find the image of this one at the kernel of this one, we see that the second cohomology group is also the the model of the essential relation with a shift of ingredient. Okay. So this is why the Kazoo complex is very interesting because it allows us to see the relation between the linear algebra and the essential relations. Now, how, how the Kazoo complex, so we saw that the Kazoo complex is related to the linear algebra, but we didn't see uh, why it's related to the singularities of K. So the study, be, the study began by Kiyoshi Saito in 1974. <coughs> we looked at the singular, uh, the singular part of the curve. So if we denote sigma equal v of x, fx, fy, fz, so the singular point of, or the singular set of c, he proved that the cohomology groups h3 minus k of the Kazoo complex are all zero for k greater than the dimension of sigma plus one. So if you have, for example, a smooth curve, we see that sigma is empty, so the dimension is minus one, and we have only one non-zero cohomology group, which is H3. <coughs> if we have isolated singularities, sigma is equal, uh, the dimension of sigma is equal to zero, and in this case we have two non-zero cohomology groups, H3 and H2. So we start with this new case. We consider a homogeneous function uh, homogeneous polynomial of degree n, and uh, the curve C defined by f equals zero, where C is a smooth curve. Then we said that we have only H3, which is non zero, and in this case, the Poincare series is completely determined, and it's given by this polynomial. So we see that this is a polynomial of degree three and minus six, also, and we also see that. The Poincaré series depends only on the degree of the, the function, of the polynomial. So if we have two curves, two smooth curves of same degree, they will have the same Poincaré series. Now, for the singular case, so we saw that we have two non-zero cohomology groups, H3 and H2 of the Kozul complex, 
And these two cohomology groups are related in this equation. So t to the power n, the Poincare series of H2 is equal to the Poincare series of H3, H3 minus this polynomial. And this is exactly the polynomial that we have seen before. It's the Poincare series of H3 of the Kazoo complex of the homogeneous polynomial, of the partial derivatives of the polynomial that defines a smooth curve having the same degree of C. Okay, so we have a singular curve of degree n, we have another uh, singular curve of degree n, another curve of degree n also that we will call later Fs, and this is the quaternary series of the Kuzul complex of F, of the partial derivatives of Fs. So then the study continued in 1994 by Shudani and Vinka. We were also interested in finding the dimensions of the plated pieces of the linear algebra. And then they proved that, so we will take here K and here the dimension of MF K. So they proved that these dimensions start to decrease starting from a certain rank, which is 2n minus 2. So they decrease and they, then they stabilize when k is equal to 3n minus 5. Yes. And they also prove that this dimension, this <coughs> dimension of F, mfk is exactly equal to tau of c. So I repeat that tau of c is the sum of all the Jurina numbers of pk at all the singularities of C. Then in 2011, the study continues and Dimka and Stiklaru uh, noticed that this stabilization might start before 3n minus 5. So they wanted to find when, when does this stabilization start and they also noticed that the first term of the Poincaré series are the same as the, Poincare, as, the, as the first terms of the Poincare series of the Milner algebra of Fs, where Fs denote a smooth curve of same degree of C. Smooth curve of degree F. Okay? So they wanted to find until when we have this coincidence. So they defined three, three integers, the coincidence threshold, which gives until when we have this coincidence, the stability threshold, starting from when we have the stability, and they also defined the minimal degree of CZGs, and we will see why this is important. So the minimal degree of CZGs, now I repeat for the coincidence threshold, it gives us the maximum where we have dimension of MFK is equal to the dimension of MFSK. The stability threshold is the minimum where we have dimension of MFK is equal to tau. And the minimal degree of CCGs is the minimum of Q where ERQ is different than zero. So starting from when we have uh, non-zero CCGs. So using the previous results, we can, we can easily prove that we can easily prove that the coincidence threshold is related to the minimum degree of CDG and it's equal to MDR plus N minus 2. The coincidence threshold is greater than or equal to N minus 2 because the Jacobian is homogeneous on degree N minus 1. So the first term are, are uh, uh, the same thing as the homogeneous polynomial. And it's less than or equal to 3 minus 2, 3 N minus 2. And the stability threshold is less, is less than or equal to 3 and minus 5. And this is by the result of Schubert and D. Okay. So now they wanted to, uh, no, they noticed that for Nobel curves, we might have some interesting results. So they proved that for a Nobel curve, so we have a no, and we have a curve whose singularities are only nodes. Uh, the coincidence threshold is greater or equal to 2n minus 4. So 
this continue to 2n minus 4. And they also prove that, you know, that, so now they have all the dimensions less than or equal to 2n minus 4, and they prove that the next dimension is given by this term. So it's equal to the number of nodes, which is, which is exactly the Jurina number of C, because we saw before that the Jurina number of a node is equal to, to 1, plus the sum of gj. And gj are the genera of the irreducible components of C whose number are R. Okay, so we have C, which is equal to union of Cj, and each one has a genus, and we take the sum of the genus. Okay? Now, for example, if we take this curve, defined by x times x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals to zero, so we see that we have union of two curves, a line and the Fermat curve, which is smooth, and both of them intersect in three nodes. So the total number of nodes is uh, equals to three. The genus of the line is equal to one, uh, to zero, and the genus of the smooth curve is equal to one. So we can uh, see, we can find that the dimension of m of f to n minus three is equal to four. The stability threshold is equal to seven. No, it's less than or equal to seven, and the coincidence threshold is greater or equal to four. Now we can compute the Poincaré series using the program singular, and we found this polynomial. So using this polynomial and comparing it to the Poincaré series of um, of the Miller uh, algebra of the polynomial having uh, which is smooth, that defines a smooth curve, we get that the coincidence threshold is exactly equal to six, and we see also that the stabilization starts from k equals to 6, so the stability threshold is equal to 6. Now, we go back to the, to the theorem. If we consider a rational nodal curve, this means that all the, all the components have genus equal to 0. So when the genus is equal to zero, the dimension of ML to L minus P is equal to the number of nodes, which is also equal to the Jurina number. So when we look at this graph, we see that 2N minus P is here. And since it decreases and it's equal to tau of C, that means that it stabilizes here. Okay, so this is so in this case, we know that we have stabilization from 2n minus 3, and we know that for 2n minus 4 and everything before, all the dimensions are known. So in this case, the Poincaré series is all determined. Okay, so for rational nodal curves, the Poincaré series, and so all the dimensions of the linear algebra are completely determined and the stability threshold is less than or equal to 2n minus 3, except if we have generic line arrangement, and in this case, we can compute S of t, we get 2n minus 3. So for example, if we take this curve, x, y, z, x plus y plus z, so we have four lines, we can draw it like this, with the line of it at infinity, so we have one node, two node, three, four, five, six. So we have six nodes, and in this case, the stability threshold is equal to 2n minus 4, so it's equal to 4, and the coincidence threshold is also equal to 4. So we can compute all the Poincaré series, and you get this. Okay? So comparing the, this to the Poincaré series of homotopy uh, of curves, we see that the coincidence threshold is equal to 4. And actually, here, since it's symmetric, uh, so here we should have, for, uh, for the smooth space, we should have 3. OK. So in the next example, we will see that for non-nodal curves, it's not, it's not really easy to control these dimensions. So if we consider this curve, given by x to the n minus 1 times y plus z to the n, we can compute the partial derivatives and we can find easily this is a g 
which is the non trivial is the gx fx minus n minus 1 y x y equals to 0. So the degrees of x and y is 1, the degree of x and y is 1. And so we see that the minimal degree of CZG in this case is equal to 1. By the relation between the minimal degree of CZG and the coincidence threshold, we see that T of C is equal to n minus 1, which is a lot less than 2n minus 4. So for non modal curves, we cannot expect the same thing as nodal curves. So, but the question, so what happens in the general case? So even if it's not the it's not like the normal curves, but do we have something special about these dimensions? So in my work, I did only the generalization to curves having double points and triple points, or the triple points. So we consider a curve having nodes and triple <coughs> points, like in this example. For example, this line arrangement, we have four triple points and three nodes. So we consider C equals to the union of CJ, the irreducible components. We take the projective uh, complement of C. We take the G genera of the irreducible components. So we have T triple points and N nodes. So the Jurina number, the total Jurina number will be n, so the number of nodes times 1, which is the Jurina number of the node, plus 4, which is the Jurina number of uh, triple points, times t, the number of triple points. And we proved that the dimension of mf to n minus 3 minus tau is between 0 and the sum of the general. So I repeat in the second <coughs> case, we have equality here. Why? In this case, we, can, we, can't, we cannot have equality. We have equality in some cases, and we will see what. So, if the sum of the genera, or if we consider a rational model curve, so all the gi are equals to zero, in this case, the dimension of the minimal algebra to n minus a 3 is equal to tau, which is the same thing as we have seen before. So the stability threshold in this case is, is less than or equal to 2n minus 3, and we have stability after 2n minus 3. Now, we have equality here, if and only if, H2, which is the second cohomology group of U, satisfies this equation. So F2H2 of U is equal to P2H2 of U. F is the Hodge filtration that I will talk about in the second section. And P2 is the pole order filtration. I won't talk about, about it now, but we have a sort of filtration on H2, and we have also another structure on F on H2, which gives the Hodge filtration. And it's, uh, it was proven by Delini and Dicke that we have inclusion between F and P. So FS is included in PS. But uh, which is equal, which is uh, an equality an equation in the case of modern curves, but not in the case of triple points. In the second part of this theorem, we prove that the dimensions of ERF n minus two is between the maximum of r minus one plus t minus the sum of the genera and r minus 1, and r minus 1 plus t. So if you have a rational model curve, all these are 0. And in this case, the dimension of erf n minus 2 is equal to r minus 1 plus t. So note that in the nodal curve, in the nodal case, uh, this dimension is equal to r minus 1. And uh, we, we have an, uh, an explicit basis for this submodel. But in this case, in the case of uh, curves with triple points, with nodes and triple points, this is still an open question. Can we find an explicit basis for EF, ER, FN minus 2 in the case of uh, rational model curves? And we didn't find anything yet. So, 
I will give some examples that illustrate this clear. So we have a curve C, which is the union of three smooth curves. Uh, having nine triple points. So we have nine triple points, so the Julian number will be nine times four, 36. We find using singular that MF16, which is 2L minus 3, is equal also, the dimension is equal to 36. So if we go back to the, the inequality that we have proved, we see that this is zero, while this is three because we have three uh, three smooth pairs of degree three, so the genera of each, the genus of each one is equal to one. And we also, if we we can see that that the inequality, no, I'm sorry, it's just that this shows that sometimes we we can we can have a strict inequality. So in this case, the Hodge filtration and the pole order filtration are not equal in this case. And here also we find that the dimension of ER is equal to 8, which and the dimension and R minus 1 plus C is equal to 11 in this case. Okay, so we cannot expect to have equality. Another example, we take the Pappus configuration and the non Pappus configuration that we have seen yesterday, and we compute using singular. We compute the Poincaré series of the Miller algebra of the first one and of the second one. And we see that these Miller algebra are not the same. So we have difference between, between them, which is t to the power 12. So this example shows that unlike the rational motor curve, where we can determine the Poincaré series of uh, any rational motor curve only by knowing the number of uh, nodes and the, the degree, in this case we have the same degree, the same number of nodes, and the same number of triple points, but yet we don't have the same one So we cannot control the dimensions of the linear algebra for k different than to n minus c three in this case. Another example, which is this one. So here we, uh, we said that we have four triple points and uh, three nodes. So in this case, the Jurina number is equal to four times four plus three, which is equal to 19. And so the dimension of MF is equal to 92 tau. Why? Because we have a line arrangement. So this is a rational model curve, and all the genes are equal to, all the genera are equal to zero. And the dimension of ER is also, uh, sub four is also equal to nine. But I consider this an example because we can also compute the dimensions of ERF01, and we found that it's zero, so we don't have CCGs of degree uh, one, but we have the uh, CCGs of degree two. The first CCG of degree two uh, is uh, this one, so dimension of ERF2 is equal to one. So we can find this equation, this relation between the partial derivatives of F, and if we consider omega, so just to mention that this relation, I found it by direct computation, but we can also find CCGs using singular. So if we consider omega to be this 2, 4, and omega uh, wedge dF is equal to 0, now consider the minimal fiber given by S minus 1 equals to 0. So we know that there exists a monodromy operator of this Miller fiber given by the multiplication by lambda, which is by exponential 2 pi r over n. And this, uh, this monodromy induces a monodromy on the cohomology group whose, uh, whose uh, eigen, uh, eigenvalues are the, uh, the nth root of the uni unit. And also, so you can Consider J to be the inclusion mass and lambda equal to the exponential minus 2 pi i over n. So we find using this, we can find explicit basis for the cohomology group of the Miller, the eigenspace of the cohomology group of the Miller fiber, and it's given by J star of delta omega. So this is the first, uh, I think the first 
type of uh, relation between the syzygies of the partial the syzygies between the partial derivatives and the the, the basis of the cohomology of the Miller fiber. <coughs> and we also did the same thing uh, using another example, which is given by x cubed minus y cubed x cubed minus z cubed and y cubed minus z cubed. So we studied equals to zero. We studied these two examples and we found we found the same. How much time? Okay. So I will start with the last section. So I will give a brief introduction about the Hutch structure. So a Hutch, the Hutch structure was defined, was uh, introduced by uh, William Hutch. This is why it's called Hutch structure. So a Hutch structure of weight m. Is on a finite dimension with Q vector space H, is the decomposition of the complex integration <coughs> of H, which is HC equal to H tensor C, so into a direct sum of complex subspaces HPQ, such that we have HC is equal to the direct sum of HPQ, P plus Q is equal to M, and we have the complex conjugation, HPQ conjugate is equal to HQP. So this such a structure uh, can be uh, as defined on projective and smooth uh, varieties. And we have also a filtration on HC given by FPHC equals to direct sum of HS and minus S for S greater or equal to P. So this is a decreasing filtration. So this is the pure Hutch structure. And then in 1970, the beam uh, generalized the, Hutch, the pure Hutch structure to mixed Hutch structure, and it applies to quasi-projective uh, varieties. And we will see it later in the next theorem. So a mixed Hutch structure is a triplet HWF, where H is a finite dimensional Q vector space. W is a finite decrease increasing filtration called the weight filtration. And we, hold, we also have a finite decreasing filtration called the Hutch filtration, such that the graded associated group with respect to the Hutch filtration uh, has a pure Hutch structure of weight K for all K. So I just uh, explain what's the greatest what's the graded associated group of H is equal to uh, w k h modeled by w k plus one. No, it's back to in state k minus one. Okay. So this is the way we associate the group with respect to the wave filtration. So the induced filtration, <coughs> not filtration on the graded associated group will be given by this. And now we can define the mixed Hutch numbers by the dimension of the graded associated group with respect to the Hutch filtration, of the graded associated group with respect to the weight filtration of HC. So we are interested in finding the dimensions of, uh, sorry, in finding the Hutch numbers. And we will see why it's interesting to find these Hutch numbers. So, in 1971, Deligne proved that for any quasi-projective variety, the cohomology group on, of X has a mixed Hutch structure such that the weight filtration and the uh, Hutch filtration have some more properties. <coughs> so, for the weight filtration, it stops at 2M for any M, B, Except if we have m greater than the dimension of x, and in this case it starts at w2m. Now for the Hutch filtration, we proved also that the Hutch filtration <coughs> starts at s0 and it starts at m plus 1. Except if m is equal to the dimension of x, then in this case, in this case it starts at 
f n plus one. Okay, so if m is greater than n, it stops somewhere here at f n plus one. If m is less than n, so it stops at f n plus one. And he also proved that if we have a smooth variety, then all the waves are greater or equal to m. And if we have a projective variety, all the waves are less than or equal to m. So in this case, if we have a smooth projective variety, we get that we have only the weight m and hm of x will be pure of weight m, which is what we have said before. So if x is a projective, a smooth projective variety, then hm of x has a pure Hodge structure of weight m for all n positive. So in my case, we consider x to be the curve, the projective curve, and we take also u to be the projective component. So we looked at the Hodge structure of on H2 of u. And why we chose H2 of u? Because H0 of u and H1 of u are already known. And Hm of u are all equal to 0 for m strictly greater than 2. And in this case, we can prove that we, using the theorem, and we can also use the other thing, the hypercomology, we can prove that the Hodge filtration is given by this. And so we are interested in finding the dimensions of the graded piece, of the graded associated group of this filtration. So we prove this theorem. We have a curve of degree n. We take the complement and we suppose that C has only nodes and triple points. We take the genera of all the curves and we take Cj to be the irreducible components of C whose number is R. So we prove that the dimension of GR1F of H2 is equal to the sum of Dj and the dimension of GRF2 of H2 is equal to n minus 1, n minus 2 divided by 2 minus T. So just to mention that if we consider here uh, p different than 2 and 1, we, have, we get everything is 0 because of the filtration that we have found before. And note also that in the case of nodal curves, so t is equal to 0, we don't have triple points, we have only nodes. And this, this uh, result was already proved by, uh, by Dinka. So, and so in this case, this dimension is equal to sum of dj, and this dimension is equal to n minus 1, n minus 2 divided by 2. We can also prove using the, the previous theorem of the lean that the weight filtration is given by this filtration. So using the theorem and using the both filtration, we can find all the Hodge numbers on H2 of u. And we have H21 is equal to H12 because of the conjugation, and it's equal to sum of the GJ. And why is equal to the sum of the GJ? Because of this. <coughs> so the dimension of this usually is the all the Hodge numbers that which is one, uh, one zero, one one, one two, etc. And we see that we have only one which is non-zero, which is H12. Then H22 plus H21 is exactly equal to the second one. So this dimension is equal to the Hodge numbers H22 plus H21. So H22 is equal to, to n minus 1 times n minus 2 divided by 2 minus t minus this dimension, which is H21. Now the second Betty number is the is the sum of uh, H22 plus H21 plus H12, and it gives us that it's equal to n minus 1 times n minus 2 divided by 2 plus the sum of the genera minus 2. So the sum, the, the second, the Betty number is also a projective invariant of curves. So in particular, if you have a rational curve, the gj are all zero, so the only non-zero uh, Hodge number will be H22, and it proves that we have a pure Hodge structure on H2, which is already a well-known property in the case of line arrangements. So for example, if we take this line arrangement, 
we can find, we know that gj are all zeros, so we have only one Hutch number h to two, and it's equal to, it's then it's equal to six, and the Betty number is also equal to six. Now, if we consider this example, x, y, z gives three triangles, and the curve x, x squared y plus x squared z, etc. It's a irreducible curve, and the intersections is given, uh, gives us uh, three triple points and three nodes. Yes. So the gene, the genera of the lines is zero, and the genus of the smooth curve is equal to one, and we have n equals to zero. So then, so the dimension of H1, I didn't mention this. Uh, the dimension of H1 is the number of irreducible components minus 1, so it's equal to 3. The dimension of GR1 is equal to 1, and GR2 is equal to 7, so the second vertical number is equal to 8. Okay, so I will end uh, just to say that at the end, I generalize this theorem, and this dimension is true for all isolated singularities. While this dimension, if we take more complicated singularities, it becomes more complicated. So if we take a curve having singularities uh, of multiplicity at most four, we see that we have this dimension becomes this term, where t is the number of triple point, s is the number of, uh, of uh, singularities of multiplicity four, and this term comes from um, singular points of multiplicity four, which are uh, which <coughs> are intersection of two irreducible components. Each one has a node. So we have an irreducible component having a node, another irreducible component having a node, and both of them intersect in a uh, point with multiplicity four. So we see that when we take multiplicity more than three. We have some terms which are not very, very nice. And I think I... Thank you. Mm -hmm.